Hey guys, welcome to Foodies Live. Um, we're streaming live from the Sub Zero Wolf Show in the kitchen in Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we're joined by um, Chef Bevan O'Neill from Chick Rotisserie and The Grind. And today he's going to show us a um, roasted black truffle chicken, creamed corn, peach cobbler, and a couple other treats. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the show, please post them in the chat room and we'll get them answered. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Chef O'Neill. Hi, my name is Chef Bevan O'Neill from Chick Rotisserie and The Grind Restaurant. Today, uh, the first thing we'll do is we're going to do what I call building a chicken. We're going to season and stuff and truss a black truffle rosemary chicken, which is a signature item at our restaurant. Uh, so first thing, let's talk about chickens. Uh, these chickens are really special. I, I took a really long time and a lot of work to uh, find these things. Uh, they're out of a small farm in Nebraska. Uh, what's really exciting about these chickens is that they're certified organic. There's a big difference between certified organic and not certified. Uh, free range, antibiotic free, and they're even kosher, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll get our bird. It's, it's right in front of us. And we'll loosen the skin so that we can stuff our black truffle butter underneath the skin. The reason why we do this is what it'll enable us to do is baste the flesh of our chicken while we're roasting it and at the same time we'll be getting a nice sear on our skin. So what happens is you have very moist uh, butter basted flesh and you have nice crispy skin. Um, while I'm getting this ready, we should probably talk about compound butters and truffles. Uh, the reason why I like compound butters is it enables you to flavor certain products uh, and get, get more volume out of your, your ingredients. So, for instance, with truffles, right here I brought a can. These are from France, and these are black truffle shavings uh, that are soaked in a brine. Uh, I waited till we were on air to open it because I wanted to get aroma pop on here, basically for myself, I guess. But smell a vision. <laughs> no one can uh, can smell it over the air. But when you first open them, I mean, it's just it's just awesome. And what I'll do is let me get let me put a little bit on a ramekin right here, so you can see them. These are the black truffle shavings. All, all a truffle is, is it's basically like a fungus, uh, similar to even like a, like a mushroom. Uh, they're only found on the 38th parallel around the world, so that's part of what makes it such a delicacy. It gives you a very strong, earthy uh, aroma. So what we do at the restaurant is we'll take butter, roasted garlic, salt and pepper, and the black truffle shavings and we'll puree it in a roboku to make it a compound butter. We spread it thin on parchment paper, roll it up into a log, and then pop it in the freezer. And something for home cooks, something I would suggest is you, you take your compound butter, pop it in the freezer, and then anytime you want to use it, if you have a special date, your husband got a promotion, you want to show off to some friends that are coming over for dinner, you pop your compound butter out of the freezer, slice it up and cook vegetables, fish, steaks, anything you want in it, and then you look really sexy because you have black truffle butter in your, in your stuff. <laughs> so, uh, um, so what we'll do is we'll gently place the butter underneath the skin. A little goes a long way, so you don't have to over butter it uh, because it's gonna melt and get all throughout the chicken, that's enough for the breast. And then we'll pop it underneath. We'll get up in here. We'll get some so that the whole bird gets flavored. The black truffle, you have some extra stuff on your hands. I encourage you to just rub it on the chicken. It's all flavor, it's all good. Don't lick it off your fingers. No, I mean, unless you want to. I mean, I don't know. There might be someone out there who <laughs> wants to do that. So then what we do here at the restaurant is then we stuff the carcass with rosemary. We're doing here. 
Then we'll take lemons. We'll stuff it in the carcass. I'm going to get to in a second why we do this because I brought some of my magic bells with me. That's a custom feature of our restaurant at Chick Rotisserie and Wine Bar. And then we'll take some uh, rosemary leaves that have roughly chopped and we'll stuff it underneath the skin as well. So that way we can get the inside of the carcass flavored as well as the outside. And what's really neat is then you can see the stuff all underneath the skin, which is kind of neat, a little flavoring surprise. We'll chef, here. when yes, you sir. talk about compound butters, uh -huh. you can do anything with the compound butter. Oh, dude, I've, I've done all kinds of kooky stuff with butters, dude. I've done caper butters, um, lemon butters, um, you name it. You can pretty much puree it and turn it into a butter and, and uh, you know, you get more volume out of your product that way and then it's a great emulsifying tool. So this right here, these are my magic bells. Um, what these are, these are custom made for us. We use them at the restaurant. The reason why we have these bells is we've all, I'm sure at home, stuffed the chicken and then the stuff kind of comes out of the carcass and you're like, well, why did I stuff the chicken? If it's coming out, it's not working. Well, what this does is you stuff it inside the chicken. You go like that. So it's almost kind of like beer can chicken, you know, where you oh. stuff the beer can in it. But this is Magic Bell chicken. And you go like this. And so then what happens is it's all beautifully stuffed in the chicken. And then when it's rotisserie, it's going around, everything that we stuffed inside that bird is trapped inside there. So what we're doing is we're steaming from the inside out, flavoring the whole chicken. You got a wow. custom chicken swing? I do. <laughs> I, I'm a cookie guy. Yeah, I'm a cookie guy. So next we'll move on to trussing. So I've seen on TV a lot of trussing stuff and everybody's wrapping and looping and all this, you know, classic French stuff. You know, I, I have a French background too, but you know, I like things to be easy because I'm kind of lazy by nature, I guess. And so <laughs> what I've come up with is a much faster way to truss. I thought we would go over that now. Really the point of the trussing is you want to keep your legs tight to the body. So you have uniform cooking, right? So then why go through all the mess of all this kind of stuff? So what I do is it's basically like I'm just tying my shoes. I just take it like that, loop it over, get into my wings like that, go around the back, come out of the side, and I'm done. So wow. instead of it taking you know, a minute, three minutes, five hours, depending on how good you are at trusting, this takes 30 seconds. And you can do that even without a magic bell. Done. Trust. So nice. at the restaurant, what we like to do is we like to season with salt and pepper. Get it all over there. The nice thing about rubbing the butter on the outside is it'll also help grab the, the stuff. And then this is a special spice mix that we make at the restaurant. I should say I make, I make since I'm the chef. But uh, it's, I call it magic dust. And it's basically uh, like a mesquite powder. Basically, it's going to give you some nice color. And it's going to give you a little extra kick uh, on your product. And we use it for all kinds of stuff right here. And then now we'll uh, pop in the oven. OK? Chef, are those magic bells hard to find? No. Uh, the, the company is Jasper that they uh, come from. Uh, let me wash my hands. and. Uh, you know, you, you can order them. Uh, a deal I make with guests that have asked me about the bells is uh, I tell them if they come see me at the restaurant and order dinner or lunch, I'll tell them how to get the bells. Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> good call. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a clean freak, so let me uh, do this really quick because this will bother me for the rest of the show if I don't clean this it's up. It's important to stay uh, no yeah, cross contamination. Yeah. There so you go. What we'll do is we'll do a little magic of. TV action, and uh, we'll flip over our cutting board, and I'll pull a chicken out that I already have working. Those magic bells sure yeah. do work quick. So 
what we'll notice here, oops, making a mess. Um, what you have here, so you can see all the fat and everything that came off the chicken that all got trapped on the bell. And what that, that the fat from the, the steam fat all went into the chicken, which makes it even more delicious. Uh, and that's why we do it. Here we go, we'll take this off. Another nice thing about my little trussing technique, my easy trussing tre technique, is it's easier to take the, take the string off the chicken that way as well because you don't have any, as many loops and tying and all that kind of stuff. So voila, easy, off the bell. Wow. So what we do at the restaurant, I like to kind of show off a little bit and show the guests how juicy and moist my chicken is. So the way we like to serve it is we don't like to overcut it uh, for two reasons. One, what's the point of trapping it all in together for moistness and then chop it up before I serve it to you and then I lost all the juice. Uh, so we like to just go right along the breastbone right here, and just to the side. And if we can get a close-up shot, I'd really like to show how moist and juicy my chicken is. Look at, look at that water right there. I mean, you can see like the balls of water all through there. And that's because of the way we trust it and because of the way we cooked it. Also, the brining helps. We brine our chicken for 16 hours. Uh, that's kind of like the magic number with the, and then look, look at this. I mean, this is, this is sexy, dude. Look at all the water <laughs> all up in the carcass right here. I mean, that's, that's beautiful moist chicken. You can see our rosemary and our lemons that came out. We'll just cut this little side bone. A little, little tidbit. This right here is my favorite part of the chicken, believe it or not. I really wish I could serve that, but guess we get freaked out. But man, you suck this thing. Oh, dude, I mean, it is sexy, dude. I'm telling you, man, I don't know if any of you guys are... Here, I want somebody to eat that thing. You suck that thing. I'm telling you, man, it's the best part. I'm going to move it over here. Someone, someone suck Please, on that someone thing. Suck. Look at that skin. I'll, Look at that stuff. Come on, I'll buddy. be the sucker. Don't be a wimp. You're Come on. Sucker. Yeah. Yeah. So then what we'll do is we'll take our chicken. That's beautiful. We'll uh, get our chicken right here. And what's really neat, if we can get a close-up shot of it, is I want to show how the butter melted onto the chicken. You see all that right there? Yeah. The rosemary, the butter, everything, that's from the butter melting into the chicken meat underneath that crispy skin. I mean, look at that beautiful crisp skin, but look at that butter, how it just kind of like, uh, embedded itself into the meat. What? And uh, the only way to achieve that is with compound butter trick. So we'll take it really rustic. I'm kind of a rustic guy. So a little rustic chicken right here. We'll hit it again with a little bit of salt and pepper. All right, because salty skin is king. And then I brought a little truffle oil as well. Nice. And this is exactly how we do it at the restaurant. And then we'll hit it with a little truffle oil also with the butter. Now, when you put the chicken in the oven, mm -hmm. a lot of at-home cooks don't know the difference between convect and just bake. Mm -hmm. Does that add to the crispy skin at all? Uh, yeah, because you'll have more air, uh, which will do that, and you have more mo moisture when it's convection. Um, you know, I'm a pretty simple guy. My mother always calls me all the time with these cooking questions, and nine times out of ten people who don't cook for a living, they overthink it, man. It's, uh, I am not a bright guy, okay, but I'm a great chef. And I, I think it's because I don't overthink it. Like, I just cook it, man. Like, you know, if, if you brine it, if you butter it, and you cook it to 165, it's going to be delicious, man. Just stop <laughs> thinking about it and messing with it, you know, and trust it. So here's this. I want somebody to eat my sexy chicken, dude. Uh, <laughs> that stuff is sexy. Okay, so moving on, let's go to... Let's go a little out of order. Let's go to dessert next so I can toast my uh, granola. So another thing that we do at the restaurant is uh, we make a really 
beautiful peach cobbler. And the reason why I brought this dessert is it's, it's really, really simple. So what we have here are fresh peaches. Uh, am I right, huh? Is that not the best part of chicken? <laughs> Show them sucking that bone, it's dude. Pretty good. I hate <laughs> I that skin, dude. Do. Here we go. All right, all right, anyways, I'm telling you, so people get freaked out because it's like a backbone, but it's a neck bone or whatever, but it's delicious, I man. swear there's, there's chicken on it. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so here we go. So fresh peaches, cinnamon, sugar, a little allspice, and then this is where it gets really good. And I never like to cook if I don't take a shot, so. Gotta make sure it tastes all right. Peach knobs makes the world go round. <laughs> so what we do is we hit it with some peach liqueur as well. And then we cook it down. You know, booze is kind of an underused, man, I'm gonna eat this. Oh man, okay. Um, <laughs> underused tool. You know, you can get a lot of flavor out of booze. It's great to hydrate things. And, um, you know, and then you can drink it while you cook, so that's always a good thing. So, so Chef, it yeah. actually hydrates things rather than dehydrates them? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's wow. liquid. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So, for instance, like with this, those peaches, they have the natural juice and, and sugars inside of it. But by adding the booze to it, did I get chicken on my face? All right, whatever. <laughs> um, by adding it to it, what we're doing with that heat, and now we're extracting that peach juice from the peaches. The liquid's enabling us to do that. Okay. That's exactly what it's doing. So, okay, so we're just heating this up. There's a little butter, a little allspice, a little sugar, peaches, and then booze. And then we'll just pop it on these little fun cast iron skillets, okay? Get it like that, nice and juicy, nice and sexy, okay? And then right here, this is something we make at the restaurant, but it's really easy to make. This is a vanilla almond granola. And all we do is we take granola, we take almonds, we roast them off, and then we take vanilla beans, and we infuse it in it. We just keep it in it for a couple of days. And as it dries out, it naturally infuses it. So we'll top it right here. And then we're going to bake it, and then we're going to eat it. We'll go like this. What's really fun, or what I think with a lot of home cooks too is, um, you know, invest in some like plateware and cooking stuff because I say this at the restaurant all the time. I can take the same dish and put it on this boring like white plate out of the 80s or whatever and it's going to look one way. Or I can get a cool plate like what the sushi guys figured out a long time ago is put it on a long plate or a squiggly plate or a blue glass plate or whatever and then the same dish or same food looks $20 better, you know, just because of what you put it on. Because, you know, we eat with our eyes as well as with our mouths. Very so true. these things are really fun. You invest, you can get it for about 10, 15 bucks a piece. Um, if you buy them in bulk, you can get them down to like nine bucks. But what's neat with these cast iron skillets is not only they look kind of cowboy and like cool and rustic and shit, but, oh, sorry. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, but you can also cook in them. So, all right, so that's Excellent. what we're going to do right now. Oh, wow, smoking oven, lovely. All right, cool. Mm. Uh, boom. So Chef, we're doing that. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know that you use a lot of organic, free-range chicken. Is there a, um, a difference in the texture, flavor? Yes, this that? is something that's very passionate and dear to my heart, and I would love to address on air. Okay, I'm totally against, anti, disgusted by what's happened to the U.S. farming and food industry. Uh, I blame most of it on chain corporate restaurants. Uh, in order to achieve a smaller margin relative to purchasing, they've made all kinds of sacrifices relative to growing and raising and developing food. If you think about it, the whole concept is flawed. So, for instance, with chickens. They pump them with all kinds of steroids, antibiotics, all this stuff, and they'll bleach them. They'll literally put them in a bleach bath to make them whiter. To, so they're trying to tell customers that they should be white. Well, you saw my fresh chicken, it was beige, kind of eerily, just like skin, right? Well, guess what? It's a living creature. It should have some beige skin. But they're doing this trick to you know, bleach them to make them white. And really what that's doing is that's putting Carthagens and all this bad stuff into the product, killing their own customers so they can create longer shelf life. Well, if you think of it, it's counterbalanced. So, so let's mess up the stuff 
so we can sit on it longer and sell it to people. I mean, the whole concept is, is flawed and wrong and just, oh God. Okay, and the same thing with produce. So they're spraying with all kinds of stuff. They're doing all this kooky stuff, the soil. I'm a gardener at home. I garden all uh, fresh. It's a great project that my mother and I share. I tend to do all the manual labor and she just kind of tells me what she wants, but whatever. Um, but then what happens is they're doing all this stuff. They're bagging it. They're doing all this stuff to it, but then they're, they're ruining it. You know, perfect example. I brought a fun little ingredient that I use a lot at the restaurant. This is culantro, not cilantro, culantro. It's basically cilantro's Caribbean cousin. Uh, it's very strong. It's a much stronger flavor than cilantro. Uh, a little bit more soapy uh, or waxy and uh, a little bit more fibrous. Uh, but oh man, this is awesome, great flavor. But if you notice, you see these little like imperfections in it? To me, that's great. I love it. I don't like it when I get something that looks too perfect. Because to me, that's not natural. That's not from the earth. They've genetically or somehow they've grown it in some way to make it look not real anymore. If you actually garden at home, you're going to notice that your stuff doesn't look that perfect. That's great. That means it's all natural. It's right. It's not Frankenstein, you know, stuff. <laughs> So that's, that's this stuff. But I mean, when I see this kind of stuff, I'm like, oh yes, are you that's gonna, awesome. Are you gonna plan on using that as a garnish tonight? Uh, well, we use it in a lot of our products and okay. I just kind of brought it so I can go on my religious diatribe against the US farming industry. That was kind of <laughs> like my main point of that. Okay, Always so good. Uh, it's in this sauce here. We'll, we'll go to that. Okay, so next let's talk about the cream corn. Okay, so um, at Chick, Part of the concept was to not only feature, uh, you know, local organic free range products, but uh, also part of the idea was to take comfort foods and make kind of like a lighter uh, version of them. And the cream corn here is a perfect example of that. So normally if you, you get cream corn at like a steakhouse or something, let me check on my granola. Yeah, it's still toasted. Um, uh, you know, it's lots of heavy cream, lots of butter, it's kind of heavy. Well, I'm doing the opposite at, at Chick. I, I kind of describe this as liquid corn on the cob. So what we do, what we're doing is, instead of it being heavy cream based, it's corn stock based. A lot of people don't realize, it, you, don't, you can't just, you know, not only fish stock or beef stock, you can make vegetable stocks, you can make artichoke stock. Um, and so this is an example of this here. All it is, is water. Corn on the cobs that we roast the kernels for our, our stuff. In fact, I'm going to put some of this in here. Uh, ginger, shallots, and here's a little trick for you at home, habanero. A lot of people are freaked out by habanero that, you know, it's really hot, it's going to burn me, blah, 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 blah. Well, what I like to use habaneros for is to steep with. So what we do is we just take the whole habanero, we put it in here, we do not open it, we do not expose the, the seeds to our product. And what it does is it makes a really nice accent, a really nice, nice note uh, in our product without uh, killing our guests with uh, too much heat. And by not cutting it, you're not, make, you're not infusing all the spice. Exactly, we're just getting uh, some of the love from it without killing our guests. So here we'll scoop this on here. And you can kind of see, I kind of describe it as liquid corn on the cob, and it also has some of my magic dust on there as well. Very uh, versatile magic dust you carry with Yeah, I, I use it on everything, <laughs> homie. <laughs> a little rosemary, a little mesquite powder that's over here, and then uh, we're sexy and delicious. Okay, it's moving delicious. on. Let's pull this out. This is probably ready now. So I just want to show how quickly this granola will uh, toast up and how easy this dessert is. We, it's, if anyone's scared at home, the reason why it's smoking is fat stripping off the fat and God, I'm not like burning the place down. All right, I'm a little so. scared. <laughs> so here we go. So what's really fun about this is that booze that I put in there, the peach liqueur, you see all that nice juice? Well, that, that's, that's 
we've extracted a lot of the flavor and the juice from the peaches to kind of infuse the booze and everything. And then as the granola gets in there too, it almost like, like an oatmeal kind of thing that lack flavors it as well with that. All right, so uh, next thing I want to do is some artichokes and some uh, traditional uh, dumplings, uh, ch chicken and dumplings. So artichokes, uh, you know, I, I really like grilling them. It's how we do them at the restaurant. This is a little truffle oil because I'm kind of decadent. So we're going to season it with a little truffle oil. What we do is we take the artichoke, we clean them, and then we, uh, um, bra we basically braise them uh, in a mix of water, lemons, and the magic dust. We bring the water to a boil, put the artichokes in, cover it with tin foil. We do it for 25 minutes so it gets, the flesh gets kind of soft. We've all had like overcooked or undercooked artichokes. I got a trick for you, it'll work every time. 25 minutes covered, turn the heat off, let it sit in there. You're gonna par cook it at that way. Cool them. If you don't cool them first, they'll break up on you when you try to grill them. But if you let them cool, they'll kind of get tight again. And then you just hit it with a little oil or truffle oil if you wanna get sexy and then uh, just kind of grill them. We'll get back to that. So chicken and dumplings. I think chicken and dumplings gets a bad rap as a, like a dish. Uh, because we've all kind of had the Paula Dean, you know, I'm going to put some truffle butter in there too, just because I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to turn this down too. So, uh, uh, you know, kind of like that flavorless, heavy cream, uh, kind of doughy chicken and dumplings. Well, I'm doing a better version at the restaurant. Right there is a buttermilk, rosemary, dumpling and right here is a savory velouté. For people who are not familiar with the term velouté, it's one of the five French mother sauces and it's a mix of chicken stock, heavy cream and onions. In this case at the restaurant we also put white wine in it, bay leaf and nutmeg. Wow. What we've done is we've sauteed some celery and onions uh, shredded chicken, the rosemary and the buttermilk dumplings, and then we just hit it with the uh, velouté. Oh wow, that's good. Okay. So we'll kind of let that heat up and then I'm going to check our, our artichoke. So we got one side, just kind of heating it up. See we're getting little nice char marks on there. See the little char marks? That's flavor, dude. Okay, so we'll plate this up uh, right here. So this right here is a garlic cream. It's heavy cream, fresh thyme, nutmeg, and roasted garlic. We make it really nice and thick and uh, kind of similar to like an Alfredo kind of vibe. Put that in the middle. Get our artichokes, grill a bit more, and then uh, we'll finish this in the meantime. So we'll take our dumplings, take them out. Hold on, wet towel burning my hand, not good. All right, so we'll drizzle this over the top. Nice and sexy. A little fresh rosemary. You can hear the flavor popping of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the uh, magic dust. You know, something I recommend for home cooks as well is make your own magic dust. You know, make, make a mix of stuff that you like and uh, you know, kind of hang out in the house with it. And then you have it on deck whenever you want to cook, kind of similar to the compound butter. You know, having those little things hanging around the house will take a number three dish and make it a number 10 dish because you have your little secrets hanging out and it's a way you can still bang out stuff really fast oh, yeah. uh, because you pre-did it. You know, and you Good can do that call. with season, seasoning mix as well as, uh, as compound butters. So we'll take our artichokes it over here, put it on a plate with our garlic cream. And then right here is another little kind of magic dust kind of thing. This is a uh, fresh gremolata. If anyone was not familiar with the term gremolata, it's kind of like an Italian thing. And all it is is it's stale breadcrumbs. We use the leftover bread from our baking team. A ton of zest, 
orange, lime, and uh, lemon, flat leaf parsley, and a little roasted garlic that we also pulse in a Roboku or a blender and just kind of make like a little bread mix. And you sprinkle it on anything and it tastes really good. All right, that's my food. Any questions? That looks amazing. All right, let's eat it. No? All right. All right. Quite a feast. Okay. Quite a feast. Uh, any questions or from the... From the peanut gallery? Yeah. I think we've got them all addressed, so thank you so much. Um, okay. Thank you to Chef O'Neill. Thank you to Sub-Zero Wolf, um, Showroom Kitchens. And we'll be back next Tuesday at, um, well, we'll keep you posted on the time. Not quite sure just yet, but we'll be here next Tuesday. So thanks for tuning in.